The question is asked about the original sin, that it is a reality. What do you mean the original sin? You see, the Christians, they believe that what Adam and Eve, when they ate the forbidden fruit, because of that, sin entered into the world. And every human child, from the time of Adam up to doomsday, is a sinner. And as such is destined to hell. Every human being goes to hell because of the sin of Adam and Eve. What they did, they ate the forbidden fruit, so God Almighty is going to put everybody into hell. Unless you believe, as Dr. Shorosh would say, you believe that Christ paid for that sin, you are absorbed. Otherwise, each and everyone, whether you call yourself Hindu, Muslim, Jew, whatever you are, everybody goes to hell for the sin of Adam and Eve. I said, look, that is not a, a just law. Because the Bible, your Bible says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The one that sins, that one will be punished, that one will be destroyed. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. If Father Adam sinned, his children will not be made responsible for his sins. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Any good deed that the good man does, he gets his reward. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Whatever evil thing the evil man does, he will be punished. But if the wicked will turn, will repent, do istighfar from all the sin that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. In other words, every person is personally responsible for his, his or her action. There is no such thing as man inherit sin, which is, in the words of one of our great Britisher, Major Yeats Brown, he wrote a book on the life of a Bengal Lancer, in which he says, referring to the Christian doctrine of the original sin and the redemption by the blood of Christ. Major Yeats Brown, he says, no heathen tribe has ever conceived so grotesque an idea, filthy, dirty, ugly idea. No heathen tribe has ever thought out such, such silly things. He says, no heathen tribe has ever conceived so grotesque an idea, involving as it does the assumption that man was born with a hereditary stain upon him and that this stain for which he was not personally responsible was to be atoned for. And the creator of all things had to sacrifice his only begotten son to neutralize this mysterious curse. You see, it hasn't occurred to any backward barbaric people, no heathen tribe has ever thought of such, such things, such nonsense. There is no such thing as the original sin. This idea that he died for the sins of mankind, it doesn't seem to occur to me because this is against the law of God Almighty where he says the soul that sinneth it shall die. He does not take an innocent man to pay for the guilty. This is against his justice. Doctor was talking about the justice of God, the mercy of God. I said, what kind of mercy and justice is this that he can't punish the evil mongers, the sinners, so he takes his own son and he gets him crucified. Love. You call that love? Killing an innocent man, his own innocent son? Amazing, amazing type of reasoning, logic. The God of the Bible, as well as the Quran, the Bible says, Jesus, uh, in the book of Isaiah, said, I forgive sins for my own sake, and I will not rem remember your sins. In other words, once he forgives you, he's not asking you for blood of sheep or goat or lamb, nor of his son, but he says, I forgive sins for my own sake, and once I've forgiven, I don't remember it, it's all blotted out. This is the law of God in the Bible and the teaching of Jesus, where Jesus Christ he says, He says, He is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. In other words, the way I carry my responsibility, you carry yours. You base your arguments on small points of the Bible. The same Bible which you believe is inaccurate to me. This is a contradiction. Why do you do this? I do respect your religion, but this is a problem I can't understand. Mr. Chairman and brethren, you see in every civilized nation on earth, people have disputes. And when these disputes go to court, 
the plaintiff, the complainant, he goes into the box, into the witness box, and he testifies, he puts forth his claim. And the opposing advocate, attorney, he cross-examines the witness. When he's cross-examining the witness on the evidence that he has given, and on that evidence, if he can prove to the judge's satisfaction that the man is lying, 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 Tilka amani yuhum, that this is their wishful thinking, vain desires, hallucination. Pull, tell them how to burhanakum. So produce, produce your evidence. In kuntum swadikin, if you are speaking the truth, let's have a look at your certificate that entitles it to heaven and destines us to hell. So they have produced it, the Bible, in 2,000 different languages. And he's saying, My Bible says this, my Bible says that. So we have to cross examine the Bible, your witnesses. And we are proving from the mouth of your witnesses that the thing that you are alleging, what you are saying, you are claiming, is not there. You see? Now you say, what about the other things which are true? I say, look, that is not at stake. If the Bible said that God is one, we say, we agree with you. You said, I quoted you from the Bible. You said, look, everyone is personally responsible for his or her action. I say, we agree with you. Can't you see? If you say, God is a loving Father in heaven, I say, right, we agree with you. But when you say that he is like Shylock, Wanting to get a pound of flesh from his creation, Adam and Eve sins and he makes you responsible. And at the beginning of 1986, there were 4.8 billion people on earth. And according to the Christian belief that everyone goes to hell for what? The sin that Adam and Eve committed. So I said, this is the most nonsensical idea. Because Adam didn't ask me before eating the apple, nor did Eve ask my wife. How can God hold us responsible? The question would be, if you had a grandson who came here to Toronto, played hockey in this arena for the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, and he got a penalty, and the rule was he had to go to the penalty box, but there was an exception that if he was a goalie, someone could go to the penalty box and take his place, would you say to him, it's okay to have a substitute, or would you say, no, that, that's not fair? There is no country on earth where if you commit murder, they hang somebody else as a substitute. No country on earth. <laughs>